Today, we're going to be taking a new optimization software I found called the Ultimate Windows Tweaker. We're going to be applying it to a standard version of Windows 11 and seeing what kind of optimizations and tweaks we can do with it. Will this help improve our gaming performance? Or will we find some hidden features in there that are not included in Windows, which are pretty cool to see? I always like customizing Windows, but I also like optimizing Windows. So this is a great tool that does both of them together. So without further ado, let's check it out. All right, guys. So to install the ultimate Windows tweaker, we need to go ahead and go to their website. I'll leave a link to this in the description down below. It's pretty easy. It just gives you a guide on how to use it but I'm gonna show off all the features in this video. So yeah, you just scroll down and then you should find this, download Ultimate Windows Tweaker, very easy to install, and then you just extract the folder to your desktop. One good thing about this optimizer is it doesn't require any setup whatsoever. So you don't have to open it, run the installer, press next, 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 and get it installed. Instead, it's just a portable piece of software. So we've got like a read this text document here with just some notes here. Like I said, you don't actually need to install this, so you shouldn't have to uninstall it. You can literally just delete this folder and it will be deleted from your system. Anyway, let's go ahead, open it up. If you get this message, just press yes. And here we go. Here is the ultimate Windows tweaker. Now it's recommended that you do a system restore point before using anything in this tool, which is one of the first things that it gets you to do. So make sure to do that. Otherwise, if you run any tweaks and it breaks your system, you can't roll back to your system restore point. So here is the option right here. Create system restore point. It just opens up the Windows System Restore. So yeah, you just go ahead here and press Create System Restore Point, and then you just call it whatever you want, press Create. And since I don't have a lot on this system, it shouldn't take too long to create a restore point, and then we can start using the Ultimate Windows Optimizer. So first of all, you've got your system information, so your operating system, CPU, your architecture, your RAM, and your username. Now, one thing that is pretty cool about this is it actually gives you a Windows Index Experience score, which I haven't seen since Windows 7. So we can go ahead here and run the assessment here, see what it will give us. So I've got a Intel Core i5-4460 CPU, 8 gigabytes of RAM and a GTX 1060 in this system. So let's see what score it actually gives us. I might actually run this on my main PC and see what this gives me. We've now got our Windows Experience Index score. Let's take a look. So as you can see here, this is scored from one to 9.9, which I believe is a lot higher than what Windows 7 used to go to. But let's have a look here. What is our lowest one? It is our primary hard drive, which is just a cheap SSD that I've got in this system. So yeah, this basically just scores all of your hardware. So your processor, RAM, graphics cards, and hard drive and the lowest score is what's pretty much letting your system down so in my case it's my ssd for you it could be your cpu memory or your graphics cards so it pretty much just tells you what to update i suppose what you should be upgrading but yeah i haven't seen this since like i said the windows 7 days so if you're an old school Windows user, then you might appreciate this. We've also got some other options in this menu as well. So we can scan for corrupted system files through here. And we can also repair the Windows system image. But anyway, let's get into the actual tool itself. There is just so many options in here. I'm not going to go through all of them in this video because it will be literally hours long. But you can also search for things as well in here if you need to find a specific tweak or option. And they've also got an about section. So shout out to the Windows Club for making this. I'll leave all their links in the description. Now, it looks like we've got a security and privacy tool here. And if you guys want to know how to improve your security, then check out today's sponsor, NordPass. Today's video is brought to you by Nord NordPass, the ultimate solution for managing and securing all of your passwords. If you're struggling out there to keep track of all your online accounts and remember the passwords for, then NordPass has you covered. If you're doing anything online now, there's a good chance you're going to need to sign up for an online account for all the websites you use. Now over time, these online accounts can add up and up and up, and before you know it, you've got hundreds of online accounts which are really difficult to manage and remember all the passwords for. And what's even worse is the threat of data breaches is becoming more and more common with an increase in cyber attacks which can leave both businesses and individuals susceptible to financial loss and potential identity theft. 
However, this is where NullPass comes in. NullPass is a secure digital password manager which securely stores all of your passwords in one place. It's a little bit like having your own personal password vault which you can take with you wherever you go. It works across multiple devices anywhere in the world and it even has a built-in data breach scanner which can scan all of your accounts in your password manager and tell you if they've been found in a data breach or not. And if they have, it can give you steps to resolve this. NullPass can also help you generate really strong, secure and robust passwords whenever you're signing up for a new account online. And no need to remember all of these or manually type them in when you're logging in because NullPass actually has an autofill feature. So in just a couple of clicks, you can sign into your online accounts with ease. NullPass even supports password sharing amongst team members. So if you're working collaboratively on a project, then you can securely share the password using the password sharing feature. So if you're ready to take back control of your passwords, then I highly recommend checking out NullPass. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below and if you use the code NOTRODAN you can get a three month free trial to decide whether it's good for your business or not. As always thank you to NullPass for sponsoring this video and let's get back into it. So it's worth mentioning that this version of Windows 11 that I'm currently running is pretty much set up completely out of the box. So we haven't optimized this at all. We've got all this kind of bloatware in the start menu and then if I go into my task manager here We've got all of the background processes that come with a standard Windows 11 install. We've got about 31 going on here, 133 background processes and about 3.2 gigabytes of RAM usage. So we're going to see if this tool can actually help us optimize our computer as well as tweak and customize it. Now I'm not going to bore you by going through every single option and explaining what they do because the software itself actually does a much better job of it. So if you're unsure what something does, just hover over the option here and it will give you a nice little explanation down here so that way you shouldn't hopefully mess up your system or do something that you regret later on but if you created a system restore point like i said to do at the start of the video you can always roll back to that so there's pretty much just like standard windows 11 customization settings in here such as being able to align the taskbar to the left or to the middle you can change the icon size as well through here as well and you can mess around and fine tune all the taskbar thumbnail settings with this slider we've got some file explorer settings here as well so you can do stuff like choosing the accent color automatically and when you first open up the file explorer you can also set it to open this pc quick access or your download folder there's quite a lot of stuff in here that i'm not going to go through you can actually turn off onedrive in the navigation pane which is really annoying if you don't use it we've also got universal ui so you can actually disable the windows lock screen which to be honest is pretty pointless if you don't have a password on your pc you just have to press space and it's just annoying if you just want to go on your computer so you can disable that through here you can enable the slideshow if you want you can also disable the login blur effect as well if you've got a low-end pc you know every little helps and yeah you've also got no notification display time as well which to be honest you should just disable notifications altogether which i'm pretty sure you can do through here as well so if you do mess around and go through these options and apply some of them all you do is just tick the box and then just go down to the bottom right here and press apply tweaks and you'll even get a little pop out here saying we're done which i'm pretty sure should go away if you have notifications disabled let's go into user accounts so in user accounts you can enable the built-in administrator account but you can also disable it as well you can also change the user control settings so if you make changes to your computer you can you can specify what kind of thresholds it will start to warn you this is highlighted here because i actually search for that so that's pretty cool that it highlights that there you can also set a login message as well if you want to do that and you can even now i remember this from school you can actually require users to press Control alt delete before they log into the computer which i honestly haven't seen since the old school computers so you can do that if you want if you've got like a shared computer or something maybe that might be good Right, now let's go into the performance settings. So this is hopefully the section which will help us optimize our computer and help us get the most performance out of it. So we've got some sliders up here. Waiting time to kill applications timeout during shutdown in milliseconds. Probably make that on the shortest if you want to. Waiting time to end services at shutdown in milliseconds. This is really annoying. If you just want to quickly shut down your computer, you've got to wait for everything to shut down. So you could probably put this quite low down as well. And waiting time to kill non-responding applications in milliseconds which again is very annoying if your application is broken and you're clicking away and it's all frozen and it's annoying this will actually kill it and uh, you can actually select what time it will do that so we've actually got some cool settings here so we can actually disable microsoft edge preloading 
You can disable super fetch through here as well and the prefetch service. You can disable the windows time service if you want that and just set your time manually. And yeah, I'm definitely going to have auto end non-responsive programs. You can turn off search indexing here as well, which is a very good one to have. And you can also disable smooth scrolling as well, which can apparently also help to improve your performance. And we'll also disable this edge one here as well. So the next one is security and privacy. So this one is going to help us kind of de-bloat windows, make it a lot better for performance and just general use. It's very good what we've got in here. So let's start off with here. So we can disable control panel, task manager, windows key shortcuts. Okay, this all this stuff right now is sounding a bit weird. Disable registry editor. So I'm guessing for increased security, you can disable stuff like the registry editor and command prompt, but I probably wouldn't recommend it. You can disable changing the wallpaper if you want to do that. Turn off user tracking. That's a good one. Disable OneDrive. You can also disable Windows Update through here as well. So you don't need a custom operating system with like an included tool to disable Windows Update because you can do it right through this tool as well. So that's good to have. And Windows Defender as well. You can disable that through here as well. This is really cool. If you make your own custom version of Windows 11, but you still want like a little tool on your desktop to disable Defender and the update services and stuff whenever you want, this might be it, honestly. We've got a privacy tab here, which is always good to have. Disable telemetry, disable taskbar, Bing web search. Thank you. So much better without that. Disable access to location, camera, messages, user info. Disable access to microphone if you want that as well. Although probably not recommended if you use video calls or voice calls or something. So yeah, I've actually gone through and I've pretty much ticked most of these boxes in the privacy section. Apart from the app access to microphone, just in case I want to use Discord or something on this computer. And also the password reveal button. Next up, we've got a browser section. Now this is mainly Microsoft Edge focused. So you can select like the default download path and preview show delay, hide delay and all of this stuff. I don't use Edge, so I'm probably going to skip this one. And then we've got context menus. So we've got like the desktop context menu, which as you can see here, I've actually reverted back to the classic one, which is just so much better than the Windows 11 one that comes with it. So yeah, I did that. I think at the very start in customization, I believe it's here, restore Windows 10 style context menu. But it turns out there's way more context menus than you might think. And you can actually customize them in this section. This is lots of customizability settings in here. So we've got additional, which you can actually enable the Windows Photo Viewer through here, which to be honest, I'm a big fan of. So we'll go ahead and do that. And you can also edit the OEM and registered information. So if you want to change like the make and model of your computer, you can do that through here, which is quite cool. Especially if you build your own PC. Normally these are just filled in with like your motherboard brand and stuff like that. Oh, wow. You can even select your own logo as well. That's pretty cool. So there we go. Our desktop is now called a Dan PC. So we've also got network tweaks and stuff in here as well, which I'm not going to mess around with. But yeah, lots of options in here as well. We've also got some tweaker options. So you can actually turn this application on when you turn your computer on. So just automatically open. You can integrate with desktop context menu, which is quite a cool one, actually, if you just want to quickly open up this tool. And you can also import and export your tweaks from other systems. And we've also got a troubleshooting page here as well, which is good to have. We've got obviously the search for tweaks option and the about. So yeah, that is pretty much the ultimate Windows tweaker. But let's go ahead and restart our system and see what we've got. All right, so I've just restarted. Let's have a look and see what we've got running in the background now after messing around with the ultimate Windows tweaker. So we've got 114 background processes. I believe before we had about 133. So it hasn't gone down quite as much as I would have liked. It's nowhere near like Chris Titus tool levels, but we tweak Windows pretty well. We've cut down on our background processes. We've gone through our security and privacy settings as well, which should hopefully improve things a bit more. And yeah, just overall, the system feels a lot snappier to use. So we could just search up stuff now and it won't search Microsoft Edge or Bing or anything like that. It's really snappy, and nice to use. It hasn't cut out anything from our start menu, unfortunately. I wish there was an option just in one of these optimizers to unpin all of these. So that way I don't have to do it all manually or uninstall them like this and just go through every single one. I know these are just adverts these aren't actually installed on my system, but still quite annoying. But yeah, we can just go through and do all of that. There we go. Much better. So yeah, I don't think this has really improved our system that much. It's more kind of tweaked it, if anything. It would be nice if there's some more optimizations in here. 
So let's just go ahead and see where it matters. Let's try and play some Minecraft and see what our performance is like now. Now I did a benchmark before I ran this optimizer or optimizer, tweaker, whatever you want to call it. So we'll see how the performance compares now. All right, so here we are in my benchmarking world. So as you can see on the top left, I've got fraps installed, which is a lot better than going in the F3 menu and potentially decreasing my FPS. These are the video settings I've been using for this time right now. And yeah, so basically the benchmark is I basically run from around here, just around in this circle here, and just see on average what our FPS is compared to before. So I'm trying to keep this test as fair as possible. We're going to be using cap frame X to do it. So let's see what we can do. All right, guys, so it's time for the all important benchmarks. So as you can see here on your screen, I'm basically doing a runaround of this Minecraft world. I'm using cat frame X to kind of record the performance and stuff that we're getting. It's so much better than just throwing up the F3 menu and then just seeing what kind of FPS we get before and after because it's going to be very marginal, I reckon, in this test. So something like this benchmarking will definitely show us this. So before I ran the ultimate windows tweaker, this is what I got. So just running rounds, this was what I was able to get. So the maximum FPS I was able to get was 1016, but it is important to mention that the max doesn't really mean anything. This means the FPS could have gone up to 1000 at like one second or one even millisecond. So it's not worth looking at that. What we want to look at is average. So as you can see here, we've got 555.8 average on a stock version of Windows 11 with no optimizations or anything like that. That is the average FPS we're getting with this benchmark. So these are basically like the lowest the FPS possibly got. So basically just like small kind of micro drops in performance. This is what that records. So again, not really relevant. What we're looking at is the average here. So you now may be wondering, well, what did we get after we ran the ultimate Windows tweaker? Well, here we go. So we've got a lower max FPS, but like I said before, we shouldn't really look at that. It's kind of irrelevant, really. But our average has actually gone up to 603.5. So yeah, 50 FPS difference. Let's go. So yeah, not really much of a performance increase, I would say. But if you're on like a really super low end PC where every single bit of FPS and performance matters, then this might be worth checking out. But as you can see, compared to before and after, there isn't really a lot in it, to be honest with you. I mean, yeah, it's cut down our background processes slightly. It's tweaked a couple of things, made things slightly better. If we look at the percentile, the 1% and the 0.2 percentile FPS, as you can see, well, it's not really relevant, to be honest, but comparing both of them, the FPS is actually higher compared to what we had before. So yeah, just overall, the average FPS FPS has increased the lowest possible spikes of FPS we've got is also higher than before so make of that what you will with these results that is pretty much the results of the ultimate windows tweaker I'll leave the links to it in the description down below if you're a massive tweaking fan then this might be for you or if you want to do some like minor optimizations this might be good I mean for me it's good enough alone just for the windows index experience score I haven't seen that in a very long time and there's also some hidden settings in there which are hidden in windows which which are nice and easy to find in this software. And yeah, I'm possibly thinking of making my own optimizer very soon. So let me know what you think of that in the comments and we'll see what I can do. But yeah, thank you guys all for watching and I will see you in my next video.